This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Garage sale season is back and I have $1,000 to spend at one of the largest garage sales in the entire nation. I'm gonna search for items to flip for profit to fund my Pokebank in order to fuel my dream Pokemon collection. This is the Pokemon Pursuit, where there's actually a twist in today's hunt. There's hundreds of garage sales, so I'm splitting up with my friends, the Caterpie crew, and I'm giving you guys 500 bucks cash. Thanks. But my team also gets 500 bucks cash, and if we get more profit, then we get to add those funds to the Pokebank. And if my team gets more profit, we split those profits as a bonus. Let's do it. I like the crew team, but Thane and I have been uh, running these parts for five years now. I'm hoping that we have a good day today, and we're only doing two hours, and we gotta make that 500 bucks go as far as we can get it. So we are uh, showing up really early to this community sale. It's a whole city, and uh, just try to get an Xbox One S. They wanted 175. It's just a little much for me. I tried to even get it for 150. Not today, they said come back later if it's still here, but uh, we're just gonna move on. Hopefully we can get some stuff Price a little lower, I respect it, but we're gonna move on. We got started right away, and I'm really hoping my team does well. I'm actually saving up for a really unique, expensive piece that a viewer wants to sell. I already have $479 in the Pokebank, but that's not even close to enough, and uh, you'll see why. So my team and I went to the first couple sales and pretty much struck out, but at this next sale, we got lucky. This is a good sign. Whoa, whoa. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. So we picked up these Pokemon games and a DS. We don't need any of these Pokemon games for the collection, but they will add some good profits for our team. So we got the 3DS, Pokemon games, the Dragon Sword, and Pokemon cards all for $18. I'm gonna guess we're gonna at least quadruple up on that. So we got Ultra Sun, Ultra I'd Moon, a 2DS. A 2DS? Some Pokemon cards that Whoa. have some vintage yeah. in it. Ooh. Well, the other team uh, has quite the score under their belt. We have nothing, so we gotta find something. The rookies are bringing it to us. Our strategy right now for this uh, neighborhood sale is so compact, the participation rate is so high that we're staying in one car, so we don't have to worry as much about parking, and so we can make sure we actually hit everything. Last year we got confused at which team was hitting what. So we're staying together, and right now they're just over there like, Alex has games oh in my hand, gosh. And they're looking at more stuff on the way out. They saw more. So this sale had some games, but nothing worth more than a couple bucks. I took a bet on an Xbox game and a PS1 game for three bucks, but they're probably only a few dollars a piece. Do you have any more video games like Xbox, Nintendo, PlayStation, anything like that? But if we get some more games like this, we might be able to sell them as a lot. Nothing special here, but I mean, three bucks for these. You know, it's nothing special like we just got, but. It's a double up. I'm, you know, when we see games, we want them, you know? You know what I mean? Games, games, games. You know what I mean? Alex and his team are already doing really well, which is a big problem for me. I, I mentioned that I need these profits in order to add to the collection an amazing and unique piece, and that's actually gonna cost me 2,200 bucks. I'm gonna save that for the end at what it is, but my team really needs to start picking it up here. So I got all the Legos for 90 bucks. There's minifigures mixed in. And then got the games for 15 bucks. There's 21 of them. Nothing crazy, but it definitely led to potentially more. Hopefully they'll grab some more. You know, they were all a buck a piece. There's some decent stuff in there. I didn't even check the cases. Just moving quick. One thing we do at every garage sale after making a purchase is ask if they have anything else. And in this case, he did have more systems that he was willing to sell. So he brought those out. We actually were able to plug them in and, and test them out, see if they work, which is definitely something you should try to do if you're gonna spend big money at a garage sale. And in this case, we were able to seal a deal. $175 and the deal is done. Another thing to do at garage sales is look for clues. What I mean is look for something similar to what you're looking for to use to start up a conversation. From there, you can ask for whatever you're looking for. And in this case, it was a case, a switch case. It's a good yeah. sign though. Yes, it is a good sign. We saw a couple game cases. Do you have any video games with them? Do you, are you selling any of those? Okay, so you don't know whose those are? They had a stack of games, each one labeled 100 bucks. What? 
I did not see that. Where they have the stack of games? <laughs> it was in the bin right below us. Did you not see that? It, it was labeled 100 bucks. <laughs> the main thing that I look for at garage sales is video games because I love them and they're super easy to flip and have a business around. That being said, I always preach diversity and being able to at least get the low hanging fruit in other categories. And in this case, there were some sneakers and some baseball gloves and sports gear that caught my eye and I knew that price low, these would probably be something to target. So I'm really hoping that the profits from these items will hopefully fuel a victory against Al Pal and Team Caterpie Crew. All right, 55 bucks, didn't expect to buy this stuff. We got some Kevin Durant's shoes and like five gloves, but I think we got some nice ones. So we'll have to look into that later. I don't even know if it's a good buy, but I have a good hunch. Hopefully our buys will get us there and the other team won't find many more scores like the first one. So we struck out at a bunch of sales, but one thing we do is we get the phone number of people that might have what we're looking for. Like they might have a kid with games, but they're not around right now to sell them. So you get their phone number to text them later to see if the kid comes around. If you give them your number, you pretty much nuke your chances of getting a response. We're mostly looking for older video games like PlayStation, Sega, oh, Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation. Well, um, Rochelle is downstairs with the gentleman now looking for the same things. Okay. I can take your name and your number. And can I take your number and I'll just text you? I'm not sure if someone else is down there looking for games. Couldn't tell what she was saying. Louie! Sorry. Hey, Dave. Hey, Alex. How are you guys doing? It's uh, mainly 360 and Wii stuff. So oh, fine. Okay. I so if you see us out in the wild at garage sales, say hi, like Jeff here. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so they took down her name and number because they have some games, but they need to contact their, her daughter. We'll see if they give us a contact back. Normally it's important to give your number. Before, I'm not too confident. Like before. We have an hour left in Quinnanthay and we split ways because I had to go back and get the other team. And uh, I just picked these up for five bucks, which I think is actually pretty good. And you guys got these on an ask. So my team and I were desperate to have a good win, but little did we know that these controllers are actually completely fake. So disregard our excitement for the rest of the video. So this sells for like $25, brand new. So it's something special, but you know, 25 times your money. I guess I would say that's a good bet, right? I mean, we haven't been doing bulk deals yet, but our margins are great. Our margins are fantastic. If you ask for video games or whatever you mainly hunt for and they bring it out, make sure to also ask for any accessories it may come with. It may be exciting in the moment to get the score, but you might forget about the controller, cords, or anything else that comes with it that you could have got for free. So, I couldn't find games I found on the PS2 stations. I've got yeah. original Nintendo, but I don't have any of the cables. Or the... That, that's, that's fine, fine too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can do 50. Cool. This is for this. Yeah. So just talked to Chase, and apparently he's gone there for like five years straight, asking for games, and he hasn't got anything. So, the fact that we got something Are, are we there, getting the NES? He said he's bringing it out, but Chase is over there. So, Chase yeah. technically, asked about it so no he told me about the nes first oh he did he did yeah well what I am i doing steal the buy. he told he told me that he wasn't willing to part with it so we have spent um 54 plus 18 dollars i don't want to add that up 72 thank you we spent 72 dollars matt computed it up with this engineering degree and we are at $72 spent. I think we could beat Chase with how much we've, with our with our profit margin, shoot. Like, That's the thing, have we discussed? Probably had like what, $700, $800 worth of stuff? Yeah. We're still struggling, getting some fines here and there, 
but I started to target things that weren't games, like this modern Polaroid. 9.30, so we have 30 minutes left in the battle. I just picked up Mr. Mike from Toy Story. We'll show that later. I only spent two bucks on it. Gosh, this neighborhood is unbelievable. The scores here every single year are insane. We're only an hour and a half in, and I'm pretty sure both teams are uh, making a play for victory here. We still haven't spent all of our 500 hours. We still have over 100 left. I don't know the exact number, but we still gotta make some final scores here the last 29 minutes. Let's go get it done. So we have the five minute countdown. It's officially 9.55, we end at 10 a.m. Just asked for video games, and he's going down to get some. So this is gonna be the last sale of the day for us, and I'm hoping we score. We still have over 100 bucks. They can just pick these up for five, so we did score those. Don't even know if that's good, but I feel like it's good for five bucks. We had vintage Hot Wheels. Um, there was some red lines in there, she was asking like a hundred bucks for him, so thank you. I just wasn't able to go that far. Got this for five bucks, so it's like fifteen dollars profit. We got the CLDS game, nothing special for a dollar. And then I found these really pristine NES boxes for $10. Five minutes, we're gonna hustle. So we were cutting it close there, but we got this in the last second. This is a PS3 top loader. Uh, we got, and like eight games with two controllers for 40 bucks. Um, I mean, probably looking at the $150 range worth a rise, so pretty good find. Yeah, let's take a look. Back to the barn, we got all the finds downstairs, valued up. We had some really good scores. Some of my highlights were the Mr. Mike for $2 from Toy Story. That thing sold for 165 Crazy. bucks. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of unreal. And then uh, my favorite find, probably the Lego find. Still have to go through those in detail, but I think it's gonna be special. And then those baseball gloves, uh, definitely a good thing to be on the lookout for. They ended up being quite valuable, an average of 40 bucks a glove. We paid 10 bucks, so that was a good score. A couple of my great finds were, our great finds as a team, were the PS3 top loader and a PS3 fat. And then the first find of the day was a $5 2DS XL. That was a huge find. Yeah, and I think uh, I think that find is gonna be deserving of this empty garage sale shelf that we have here. We're gonna have one find per week go onto the shelf, and that's gonna be this one right here. Five bucks, it will be entering the shelf. Can we put it? By far the best find of the week. That was bad. <laughs> But not only was it that, it also came with these these two 3DS Pokemon games all for five bucks. I still can't believe it. Definitely the best find of the day. So now for the results of the battle. I'm wearing the Caterpie Crew shirt, but Al Pal was actually the Caterpie Crew Excellent, team. Yes. So you can start us out with your results. So we spent $123 for a total value of $790. So that's an incredible profit margin. Yes. You made $123 yeah. go very, very far. I spent, my team spent $453. Our value was actually $1,690. So you guys yeah. had a better profit margin, but we had much more in profit dollars at the end of the yeah. day. That's what matters the most. So the uh, team Caterpie, team experience takes this one home. Um, see ya. Okay, bye. So now we have $1,716 total in the Poke Bank to go towards this really rare item that I'm paying 2,200 bucks for. And here's what it is. It's a sealed Pokemon Silver in the blister pack with a strategy guide. So it's about this tall. Viewer reached out, wants to sell it for 2,200 bucks. Now we don't have enough money to get there. 
in this episode, but join the journey of the Pokemon Pursuit to see if we can get it on the next one. And if you want to get one of the Chase After the Right Price logo shirts or a Caterpie Crew shirt, then head to our brand new website, CaterpieCrew.com. We built it using Squarespace, which was super easy to help take our online presence to another level. With their customizable templates, we made some really cool pages, including one with links to everything we buy and use for our business. With the commerce plan, we're able to run a shop with some merch and items that we produce to help display cool collection pieces with more on the way. Head to squarespace.com slash C-A-T-R-P for a free trial and 10% off your first domain or website when you're ready to launch. We're actively following a total stranger to his house to buy some video games from him. This is the greatest thing ever. We're about to go in another basement. Check out the last episode of Pokemon Pursuit here or the next episode here and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.